but I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. But had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? Most people, when they think of idols, they imagine statues and graven images of idol gods that people worship. Israelites, it's important for you to know that bowing down to graven images and worshiping statues of the Messiah is not the only form of idol worship. Anything you put before the Most High is an idol. The scripture said, if you love your father, mother, and children more than the Most High, you're not worthy of the Most High. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Did you hear that, Israelites? If you love your family more than the Most High, you're not worthy of the Most High. Everywhere you go in the beast culture, you will hear a person give the glory of the Father to an idol called Jesus Christ. Instead of saying thank you to the Most High for delivering them, most people say thank you to Jesus. The reason so many give the glory of the Father to Jesus, religion have indoctrinated many people to believe Jesus is God in the flesh. Majority of the world worship Jesus as God. Israelites, the time has come for you to understand that Jesus that is made in the image of the Europeans is definitely the God of this world. The Most High, the Father, is not the God of this world. Beware of this truth. The scripture said Satan is the God of this world. The God of this world has blinded the mind of many that they cannot see nor understand. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Israelites, the scripture said in 2 Corinthians that Jesus is the image of God. The question you must ask yourself, which God is Jesus the image of? The pagans worship multiple gods. The scriptures inform us that the Most High made man in his image and likeness. Adam and Eve are indigenous black people. Even the heathens' science confirm Adam and Eve are black. The scripture said in the book of Colossians that the Messiah is the image of the invisible God. Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. The workers of iniquity convinced the people to believe because the scriptures say Jesus is the image of the invisible God that makes him God the Father in the flesh. Being the image of the Most High doesn't make you the Most High. The first man Adam and the first woman Eve were made in the image of the Most High. If Adam and Eve were alive today, they would be labeled black. Religion created a graven image depicting the Messiah and parading the image to everyone from generation to generation of a European white male. This graven image does not resemble black people. Matter of fact, the graven image is a very good depiction of the children of the fallen angels. We know that the Most High made man in his image and likeness. If the Messiah is also the image of the Most High, shouldn't his image resemble the indigenous black people? Who is this Jesus religion present to us as God in the flesh in the image of God? Israelites, are you sure you're serving the God of our fathers whose image you are? So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. The Lord with his hands, having created man in the likeness of his own face, the Lord made him small and great.
the prince that operates in the children of disobedience is the god of this world the prince of the power of the air when you follow the beast culture and worship in the beast religion the god of this world is your god the god of our fathers abraham isaac and jacob is not worshiped nor accepted by the beast system and the beast religion wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience the book of Ephesians said the prince of the power of the air is a spirit that works through the children of disobedience. The book of Enoch identified the one you call Satan as the evil spirit operating in the lower places. This further proves Satan is the god of this world. Even the beast religion teach that Satan is the god of this world. Israelites, this is why it's important that you have nothing in common with the beast culture and the beast religion. No one who served the Father in the Spirit and in truth would have anything in common with the synagogue of Satan. What do light have in common with darkness? Can two walk together unless they agree? Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Can two walk together except they be agreed? Israelites, do you comprehend me when I say if race is the only difference between Jesus and Yahshua, they're still the same idol? The scripture said, can two walk together unless they agree? A lot of Israelites in the awakening share the same belief with the heathens they live among. What do light have in common with darkness? The heathens' gods are fallen angels. Jesus, who's made in the image and likeness of your enemies, is not the most high, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jesus, the God of this world, is an idol. That is why it's important for you to know the identity of the real Messiah. When you drop the image of their idol Jesus and change his appearance to resemble your image, but continue to worship the Messiah as God and follow the same doctrines with the beast religion, you're no different from the pagans that serve idols. You agree to be a partaker with them when you accept their doctrines of devils. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Everything the heathens sacrifice, the scriptures say they make those sacrifices to devils and not to the Most High. The Most High doesn't want his people to have any form of fellowship with devils. Regardless if the heathens make themselves appear to be serving the Most High in their temples, assemblies, churches, or wherever they worship, all of their worship and sacrifice are being made to devils. Israelites, it's important for you to be set apart just as the most high command of his people to become set apart. You cannot sit at the table with the most high and at the tables of devils. A lot of you are doing just that. You're mingling yourself with the beast religion and culture throughout the week. When the Sabbath comes, you're sitting at the table of the most high. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. A lot of Israelites in the awakening fail to see that the doctrines they are accustomed to are doctrines of devils. Most Israelites continue to follow the doctrines from Rome in the awakening making them partakers with the children of disobedience who follow the prince of the power of the air. Any Israelite that have returned to serve the father should be on the narrow road that leads to life. If the road you're on is overpopulated with the children of disobedience, you're not on the narrow road that leads to life, nor a part of the remnant. The world should hate you just like they hate the father. If you're being promoted by the synagogue of Satan and popular among Israelites and the children of disobedience, you have been compromised. What is popular with the world is an abomination to the Most High. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Ever since I started to speak on the real Messiah and revealing the identity of the real Messiah with truth, the amount of hate I've received have increased. 
This lets me know I am on the same boat with the Most High. The scripture said, woe unto you if people speak well of you. The scriptures went on to say our ancestors also spoke well of the false prophets. There are so many false prophets and there are praise in the awakening and out of the awakening. The anointed prophets are always being slandered and discredited by many for speaking truth. Woe unto the popular prophets of this world. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. The scriptures said the world hate the most high. Why do Israelites in and out of the awakening share the same God as the beast culture and beast religion? The world worship idols. If the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is not being worshipped in the assemblies, church, or wherever you worship, your God is an idol. The scriptures in the Bible further explain that if you love the world or anything in the world, the love of the Father is not in you. The lust of the flesh comes from the Satan's. The Most High, the Father, is hated and not welcome nor worship in the beast system and the beast religion. The beast system is not worshiping the Most High, the God of Israel. That is why they abolish his laws by saying Jesus, the God of this world, fulfilled the laws. Despite the real Messiah saying in the scriptures, he came to fulfill everything that is written about him. The people who have been indoctrinated by religion cannot understand the scriptures. The real Messiah had to open up the scriptures to the disciples for them to understand him when he said he came to fulfill everything written about him. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Israelites, in order for you to understand the scriptures, the Holy Spirit has to open the sealed scriptures and give you understanding. Without the guidance from the Holy Spirit, many will become deceived by the doctrines of devils being taught by false teachers and prophets using familiar spirits. The workers of iniquity and religion don't have the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to them. They rely on familiar spirits whom they call the Holy Ghost to make it appear as if there are prophets and teachers anointed and sent by the Most High. As a result of Israelites and the indigenous black people failing to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth, in addition, each generation failure to teach the next generation the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, the Israelites have wondered after other gods. The scriptures has documented many occasions where the Israelites have abandoned the most high for the idols of the heathens. This generation of Israelites living today are following in the footsteps of their fathers, serving other gods in the land of their captivity. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Now that the harvest is near, the Most High is separating the tares from the wheat in this generation. The truth that is being revealed is setting the remnant free. For multiple generations, the Satans indoctrinated the people to believe the Messiah, the Most High sent to do his will, is the Most High in the flesh. Satan used the doctrine of the Messiah being God in the flesh to establish religion, as well as to fulfill his desire to be like the Most High by becoming the God of this world. Lucifer is the rebellious prince that deceived himself and said in his heart that he would sit on the mount of the congregation on the sides of the north. Lucifer also said he will ascend above the heights of the cloud and he will be like the Most High. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Lucifer said he will exalt his throne above the stars of God. He went on to say he would sit on the mount of the congregation on the sides of the north. The only way Lucifer could accomplish his desire to sit on the mount of the congregation, he had to make the people believe he was God. The way Satan accomplished this was to indoctrinate the people into believing that Jesus is God in the flesh. As long as the people believe Jesus is God in the flesh, they will worship and exalt Jesus. Presently, Jesus sits 
on the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, south, east, and west. Jesus is the God of this world. Even the most remote places of this world have the graven image of the beast and worship the graven image. Satan have accomplished his desires to be like the Most High by indoctrinating many in religion that he is God in the flesh. The scripture says Satan have deceived the whole world. And the great dragon was cast out, an old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Israelites, the scriptures didn't say Satan is trying to deceive the whole world, but he actually did deceive the whole world. The mother harlot, the Roman Catholic Church, is the head leader of the Christian faith. Whatever laws or statutes the workers of iniquity who control the church with Satan creates, all Christians follow. Even the Protestant churches are controlled by the Roman Catholic Church. The headquarters of the Christian faith is located in the sides of the north in the great city where the kings of the earth have fornicated with and became rich. In that wicked city whom the scriptures prophesied against is where Lucifer's seat is located, fulfilling the scriptures. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Everything written must be fulfilled. Israelites, when you begin to see what is hiding in plain sight, you can't unsee the truth. If you didn't know by now, Lucifer or Jesus is being worshipped all over the world as God. A lot of Israelites worship Lucifer as Jesus. Most Israelites believe Rome without a word. That is why the idols of the heathens are destroying them. The biggest idol on earth is the false messiah. Many Israelites follow in the footsteps of Rome and worship Yahshua as God the Father. It's through this great error that everyone who bow down to worship other gods will perish. A lot of Israelites have made Satan their prince and rejected the prince of life the Most High gave charge over them. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the prince of life whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. Our ancestors requested a murderer to be set free and killed their prince. Until this day, many Israelites are rejecting their prince. Dan, the son of Jacob, said to his children that they would make Satan their prince. Dan's descendants are not the only Israelites that made Satan their prince. Both the kingdom of Judah, as well as the house of Israel, have went astray and made Satan their prince. For I have read in the book of Enoch, the righteous, that your prince is Satan, and that all the spirit of wickedness and pride will conspire to attend constantly on the sons of Levi, to cause them to sin before the Lord. Who is the prince the Most High set over you, Israelites? Majority of you don't know. You know Jesus, the God of this world. Israelites, the time has come for you to decenter idols out of your life. In order to see the power of the Most High, the Father in your life, every idol that has first place in your heart needs to be removed and destroyed. The time has come for you to ask the Father to remove every idol that is standing between you and Him. My hope is to help you dethrone every idol that is taking the place of the Most High in your heart. The synagogue of Satan's doctrines have a stronghold on the Israelites who refuse to humble themselves. Even when the truth is being revealed, they reject the truth to continue to serve other gods. The scriptures is correct when they say the God of this world has blind the minds of many that they cannot see. Our ancestors struggle with the sin of idolatry and this generation is no different. Israelites, you must remove your idol gods in order to see the hands of the Most High in your life. The Most High will not share his glory with anyone. I am the Lord, that is my name. 
and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. The scripture said in the last days, there will be an increase of wickedness. People will be lovers of themselves, disobedient, lovers of money, vain, traitors, having a form of godliness, but denying the power. There will be difficult times and a lot of spiritual wickedness taking place. Israelites becoming lovers of money, vain and self-righteous are a form of idolatry. Remember, an idol can be a person, place or a thing. The Most High said, if you love your family more than him, you're not worthy of the Most High. Some people fail to view self-righteousness, vanity, and the love of money as a form of idolatry. If you're a person that have an abnormal love for money, vanity, covetous, boastful, proud, self-righteous, and a blasphemer, you must deal with these unclean spirits if you want to see the hands of the Most High in your life. This know also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Israelites, it's very important that I mention this form of idolatry because some people who don't worship statues and engraving images, they serve the Father, are not aware of the other forms of idolatry. The scripture says stubbornness is like iniquity and idolatry. Israelites, there is a very fine line between idolatry and worship. That is why it's important that you examine yourself to find any offense in you. When the offense is found, ask the Most High to cleanse you and lead you on the path to eternal life. We must humble ourselves at this time. The sin of idolatry is very real in the awakening and out of the awakening. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. The greatest idol of all times is Jesus Christ. To the Israelites, it was given the opportunity to know the mysteries, can see the idolatry in Messianic worship. At the appointed time, many Israelites will begin to uncover truth that will help set them free from the stronghold Messiah worship has on our people. Remember, it's through knowledge where the just be delivered. I spent the last few weeks letting you know the consequences to rejecting knowledge. The scripture said the Most High will reject you and your children for rejecting knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Israelites, the time has come for you to know how to differentiate the word of the Most High in the Bible from the alterations done by the synagogue of Satan in the scriptures. It's important for you to know how to do this. If not, you will find yourself on the broad road that leads to destruction. Not too many in the Israelite community are aware that the real Messiah is not God the Father in the flesh. The Israelites' response to white Jesus is black Jesus. The time has come for you to realize white Jesus and black Jesus are not God in the flesh. The real Messiah is the holy angel, Michael. It was Michael that came in the flesh as Joshua ben Joseph, a.k.a. Yahshua. Michael has been with our people from the beginning. Before the Messiah became flesh, he operated in the scriptures as the angel of the Lord and many other titles given to him to conceal his identity in the scriptures. The workers of iniquity in religion created many doctrines. The workers of iniquity use certain scriptures to support their claims that Jesus, the God of this world, is God the Father in the flesh. The scripture that said no one can come to the Father but through Jesus is used by many to claim Jesus as God. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I think I need to do a message solely on that verse as well. The scripture in the book of John said, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but through him. This verse is loaded. 
The first thing I want to address is Jesus saying no one can come to the Father except through him. That portion of the verse alone shows that he's not the Father in the flesh. Jesus clearly said you can't get to the Father the Most High except through him. How does that scripture proclaim he is God? Nowhere in that scripture does it confirm Jesus as God in the flesh. My question to you, Israelites, what happened to our fathers that didn't know Jesus before he became flesh? That scripture said you cannot come to the Father except through Jesus. Jesus is a God our ancestors did not know, a God made with man's hands of wood and stone. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Our fathers and mothers from the beginning and the countless generations that passed away before the Messiah became flesh didn't know Jesus. Our fathers knew the Most High, the Father, and the angel of the Lord. If Jesus is the only way to the Most High, what about King David, Sarah, Leah, Abraham, Jacob, Judah, whose lineage it was prophesied the Messiah would come from. They didn't know Jesus. How did our ancestors that served the Father get to the Father if Jesus is the only way? This is a serious question one must ask the workers of iniquity who use this verse to get many to bow down to the God of this world. You also have to question this verse. Israelites, the real Messiah said, no one can come to him except the Most High, the Father who sent him, draws you to him. The real Messiah went on to say he will raise all the people the Most High, the Father, draws to him in the last day. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Israelites, it's important for you to use discernment. Without it, you will believe the alterations done in the scriptures. You just heard two scriptures from two different messiahs. One who proclaimed you can't get to God, but through him only. The other messiah said the most high, the father who sent him must draw you to him and he will raise you up in the last day. What happened? What changed? One messiah is very humbled and the other is very prideful and boastful. Just like Lucifer who deceived himself and said he would be like the Most High and sit at the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. The Most High, the Father, would not share his glory with anyone. When the Messiah said that he will raise them up in the last day, it's prophesied that when the great prince returned, the Israelites and all the righteous will be delivered. Everyone who passed away and everyone who's alive at the arrival of the great prince will be delivered all whose name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Deliverance for all the righteous, which includes the generations that passed before the Messiah became flesh, everyone whose name is written in the book will be delivered at the time when the great prince come after the tribulation. The rapture doctrine proclaims, Jesus will save you before the tribulation. The book of Daniel confirm, after the tribulation, the Messiah will come to save the righteous. The book of Matthew also confirmed the Messiah returning after the tribulation. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Israelites, I hope you can discern the two messiahs in the scriptures. Can you see the alterations done in the scriptures? Judah, the son of Jacob, said to his children in the testament of Judah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, his brothers, and him will rise at the arrival of the rod of righteousness who will restore his kingdom. The book of Daniel confirms the great prince will come and everyone whose name is written in the book shall rise. 
Then shall the scepter of my kingdom shine forth, and from your root shall arise a stem, and from it shall grow a rod of righteousness to the Gentiles, to judge and to save all that call upon the Lord. And after these things shall Abraham and Isaac and Jacob arise unto life, and I and my brethren shall be chiefs of the tribes of Israel. If you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you into all truth, you will see what is hidden in the scriptures. In the book of John, the Messiah confirmed the Most High gave him the righteous. In addition, the humbled Messiah said, no one will be able to pluck you from him as well as from the Father. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, that they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. If the Father have to draw you to the Messiah, and the Most High gave you the Messiah, why is Jesus saying you can't come to the Father except through him? The Messiah also revealed in the book of John, it's written in the prophets that everyone will be taught by the Most High. Everyone that have learned of the Father comes to the Messiah. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. So far, there are several scriptures confirming that you have to know the Father first. Once you know the Father, the Most High will bring you to the Messiah. The doctrines from the beast religion proclaim you can't even get to the Father unless you go through Jesus. Who is Jesus that you can't get to your God but by him only? How did our ancestors get to the Most High? How did the Most High say to Abraham, get out of your country and I will bring you to a land flowing with milk and honey? How did the Most High establish the everlasting covenant with Abraham and our ancestors if they had to go through Jesus first? How did the Most High say to Pharaoh via Moses to let my people go so that they can worship me? And afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Our fathers and mothers who lived before the word became flesh didn't know Jesus. They knew the angel of the Lord, the promised lamb that would deliver their children in the latter days. The Most High was very present with his people. Yet several generations later, after the coming of the Messiah, his people that are called by his name cannot come to him unless they pass through Jesus. Have any of our ancestors prayed to Jesus first and then the Most High answered them? Didn't Jacob and the prophets pray to the Most High, build an altar to the Most High, and made a sacrifice to the Most High? When the Most High accept their offerings, he would send his angel with a message to give to his people. The Most High would also speak through his prophets via his spirit that would come upon them. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king, Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Israelites, how many gods are you serving if you can't get to your God except through the God of this world? Can you serve two masters? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Let the truth of the Most High's words set you free. The scripture said no man can serve two masters. It's either you love one and hate the other. You can't serve them both. The Israelites in the awakening are serving two masters, the son God and his father. If you're an Israelite, your only God is the Most High, the Holy One of Israel. No idol should be standing between you and him. The Holy One of Israel said there shouldn't be no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Several generations later, after the word became flesh, we have a sun god that is telling us we can't get to our God, but through him only. Think about it, Israelites. Meditate on this truth for a moment. Why must you pass through Jesus to get to the Holy One of Israel? 
None of our ancestors had to go through anyone to get to the Father. The synagogue of Satan wants to keep you in sin. The sin of idolatry will separate you from the Most High. They made you believe that you have to go through Jesus to get to your God. In addition to passing through Jesus, the workers of iniquity made you believe the same Jesus you have to pass through is your God in the flesh. Why must you pass through Jesus if you're already interacting with the Most High? We all know of a fallen angel that wants to be like the Most High. This fallen prince has taken on the likeness of whoever to get his heart's desire. The Most High said he will bring the God that stands between you and him down to hell in the sides of the pits. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. It's unfortunate that it has taken Israelites this long to unmask Jesus. I find it strange that our people have to go through an idol to get to their God. During the Old Testament times, that wasn't the case. Our ancestors who served the Most High had the angel of the Lord to assist them. They were aware of the lamb that would come to deliver our people and the righteous in the last day. Our ancestors respected the angels that came with the message from the Most High. On some occasions, our ancestors would bow down to worship the angel of the Lord and many other angels the Most High sent to help his people. It's documented multiple times in the scriptures of the angels saying to our ancestors not to worship them because they were servants just like them. The angels would tell our people to worship the Most High. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not. For I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. In the same book of John, we have a lawless Messiah called Jesus who claimed to be God in the flesh. In another breath, he said you can't get to the Father except through him. The scripture said the Messiah is a mediator between God and men. The scriptures also said the Messiah is an intercessor. How does an intercessor and one who mediate becomes the most high? The real Messiah in the scriptures confirmed multiple times in the scriptures that he will lose none of the people the Most High gave to him. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Israelites, the best way to tear down strongholds is to deconstruct the doctrines of devils taught to us by the beast religion. When you allow the Holy Spirit to unmask the biggest idol, Jesus, with truth, you will soon see that he's not of the Most High. When the Most High draw you to the Messiah he sent, you will begin to see him everywhere in the scriptures. The time has come for the true worshipers to worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such. To worship him. The truth portion of serving and worshiping the Father has been a challenge for some Israelites. Some Israelites can't see through the doctrines of devils, the workers of iniquity that runs the beast system with the God of this world created. A lot of Israelites forget that the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. Israelites, it doesn't matter how good the doctrines from religion sounds. In order for you to be transformed, you have to allow the Most High to renew your mind. That is the only way you will find truth. You will not find the truth in the beast religion. If the truth and the Most High was in the church, the Most High wouldn't be pleading with you to come out of her. 
And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Israelites, don't mistake Jesus, the God of this world, for the Holy One of Israel. The Most High said, if you look for him with all of your heart, you will find him. Repenting and seeking his truth is how you find the Father. You don't have to go through the God of this world to get to the Most High. The Messiah made it possible for us to find forgiveness of sin when we repent. By no means does the Messiah seek to be worshipped by anyone. The humbled Messiah said he received no honor from men. I received not honor from men. Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Israelites, the world will accept its own. Jesus, the God of this world, is accepted and loved by many in the beast culture. The humbled Messiah is not accepted in the beast culture or the beast religion, fulfilling the scriptures. When the Messiah walked the earth, he was rejected. Israelites, are you sure you didn't let the God of this world deceive you into idolatry? The only way you will see the power of the Most High in your life, no idol can stand between you and the Most High. If you're a follower of Jesus, the God of this world is standing between you and the Most High. Satan is the God of this world. The time has come for you to remove the idols out of your life. Today, the Most High unmasked Jesus with truth. Let the truth of the Most High's words sanctify his people. Father, let every idol that stands in the heart of your people be dethroned. I thank you, Father, for hearing me. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light.